Big time win for the Titans in Houston, and they are in the playoffs. And they includes a good friend of this program, a man who uh, helped blow open the holes for Derrick Henry, the league's leading rusher in 2019. And he is also uh, one of the co-hosts of a podcast called Bussin' with the boys would be much better if the bus from which the podcast emanated had an actual motor under the hood. He's Taylor Lewan. How are you, Taylor? <laughs> I'm great, Rich. I'm electrostatic to be here, and we almost made it all the way through with an intro without you insulting me a little bit. So <laughs> day. You know what? I'm, I, it's not an insult. I'm actually trying to make it better for you, Taylor. You know, I'm trying to improve. Uh, it's odd that you would take it negatively. No, no, no. I feel like, you know what? It's after you hear so, something so many times, so many people coming at you for the same reason, you yeah. have to finally make some changes. The bus is getting an engine. Things are working out. But more importantly, Derrick Henry is a rushing leader of 2019, and that's pretty cool. Yes. Let us talk about that, Taylor Lewan. Why did things work so differently with uh, Tannehill uh, back there? How, how did things change in your mind, Taylor Lewan? Well, I, I think – the offensive line really started to gain, uh, gain a lot of chemistry. Obviously, that didn't help us at all by being suspended for four weeks. And, you know, Roger and I didn't get very much time to, you know, figure out what his, uh, well, like, what I could help him with, what he could help me with, and how we could mesh and be a better left side of the offensive line. We've, we've gotten better as the season's gone the more we played together. I think that's helped a little bit. Um, but honestly, man, you know, sometimes you look at backs and say, well, that guy, <clears throat> he's a product of uh, a good zone read team. He's a product of this. He's a product of that. I, I mean, I've, I've been with Derek for four years now, and we've played in different offices together, gap schemes and also outside zone schemes. And the guy is, a, is an extremely talented individual, and I think that he's one of those guys that whatever kind of offense you put him in, he's going to be successful. And so um, the, my, he, the, my hat goes off to him, man. I'm, I'm super happy for him. He's one of my favorite players I've ever played with. I love the guy. Yeah, of course. And, you know, knowing that he's coming downhill, that just changes the mindset of an offensive line that you just go hit somebody right in front of you and let him do the rest. That must be something. Yeah. Something well, I, I've been, I've been hit by Derek downhill and it is not fun. What do you mean? There's been a, there has been a couple of times, that, well, a couple of times in practice, you, you know, you turn around or you think the play's over and here comes Derek, dude. He's a train man. He's a, He's a tractor for sure. He just comes and he will hit anything that's moving. And so that guy, he'll get a yard, he'll get 50. He's got the speed to get 50, and he's got the strength to get a yard. And I think um, it's really impressive, very impressive. Now, again, I, I, I know, again, there is a sensitivity to the question when I ask about Tannehill because, you know, Mariota is your guy too and has been for a yeah. long time. Um, but why, why has the offense seemed to click with Tannehill uh, back there? Taylor, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's one of those questions. I have no idea. I really don't because that's way above my pay grade of, I don't even know the first, if you put me in at quarterback, we'd be 0 16. <laughs> so I, I don't even know how to, how to do that. I can play left tackle. I'm literally a one trick pony. And that is it. I can play left tackle. Right. But I think, um, you know, Tannehill has the experience of, you know, he's gone through the ups and downs. So obviously he was a first round pick to the dolphins and he was in a quarterback race back in the day. And he had some, some success, got a big contract. And then, you get traded and you're a backup and he, he's dealt with a lot of stuff. And I think, you know, during the preseason, when I was running with the twos, I remember just sitting there thinking, man, this guy really works the pocket. He can, and he throws it on time. Um, and he's got, he's got a, he's got a confidence about him. That's, you know, I think it rubs off on people. He'll come in every single week. Uh, Frabel gives us, you know, keys to the game and offensive keys will be whatever they are. And before every drive, Ryan will come in and point at the O-line and say, hey, remember this key. Hey, receivers, remember that key. Mm-hmm. And kind of like gives us that, here. let's get going. Let's get and, and he just, he does a great job of commanding our offense. Taylor Lewan, Titans offensive lineman, uh, three-time Pro Bowler right here on the Rich Eisen Show. You mentioned Vrabel. What a big week this is for him um, to be in the playoffs uh, for the first time as a head coach and of all places for him to go, New England, where he won three championships and also in back-to-back Super Bowls, was a surprise touchdown target for Tom Brady. I mean, this guy is lionized up there. Any sense at all about what you think this means to him this week, Taylor Lewan? Well, I'm, I'm sure it means a lot to him um, to go up, but he's still really good friends with Tom. You know, I think when we practice against him this year, Tom – uh, got him a little present, a little gag gift trophy. And they, they were laughing and joking with each other. And, 
you know, he's got a lot of respect for those guys. I mean, anytime you've seen a team like that who has had so much success uh, in the last, you know, decade, it's or two decades really, like it's it's really um, it's something you you admire even from afar. Like when we were practicing against them, I would sit there and be like, you know, damn, that's Tom Brady. How cool is that guy's on the same field as him? And I think, um, but I think when it comes to Rays, man, he's uh, he's focused on this win, and I think. You know, this is the biggest game of our franchise because this is the first. This is our playoff. This is a playoff game, and so we need to take care of this business and just keep moving forward and take and stacking the confidence that we have built throughout the season and continue the momentum into this first game. What was the gag gift? What 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 happened with the trophy? What, what was this? <laughs> I'll, I'll let Rabel. I'll let Rabel tell you if he wants to tell you. But it was. I'll be honest. With you, it was kind of funny. It was a good little. It was a good chirp by Tom. Okay, a good chirp by Tom, and he presented it in front of both teams. He actually presented it. No, he, I think he just sent it to him on the side, and then I walked in his office, and he, uh, he was laughing, and he pointed at it. Okay. I'll let, I'll let, you know what? I'll let Rabel paint the picture for you. It was, Very it, good. Was a, it was a beautiful scene between two good friends. Well, it is, again, like I mentioned, uh, Rabel's first game as a head coach in the playoffs. However, it is not yours and a bunch of other players that were there a couple of years ago, first playoff stint, and not the first playoff game in Foxborough also, how much do you think that experience for anybody who was there will be helpful this weekend that it's not a new playoff environment for you and them? Yeah, I think, I mean, that was, that was, a, that was a wild playoff run for us going to, going to Kansas City and being down 21 to three at half and then coming back and winning that game when nobody expected everybody wrote us off at the, at the half. You know, I think when you go play the Patriots, the, you're not going to be surprised by anything. They're a damn good team. And their defense is sound. They play extremely well. They play gap sound defense. And they'll play a lot of different kind of defenses that you have to prepare for in a short week. And, um, I mean, their their fans are awesome. They have a great atmosphere. Um, Gillette's seen a lot of wins. And so you just got to go in there with the mindset. You just got to try to steal something from them, man. They, they, they are extremely good. And, you know, people are talking as if they – uh, you know, they're not the same team. This, I feel like every single year for the past five years, they've been trying to say Tom is not the same guy. And he just uh, he proves them all wrong. So we can't go in there with the thought that they're, you know, less of a team than they have been before. You got to go and you got to play your best ball because if you don't play your best ball, you're not going to win this game. Well, Kyle Van Noy says it's a revenge game for them because you guys beat them last regular season 34 to 10 and that this is a <laughs> great way for them to get fired up. Hey, Kyle Van Noy has four rings. He doesn't need to talk to me about revenge games. All right. <laughs> Dan also, and he is a he is a guest on Bustin' with the Boys. Subscribe rate five stars. He's very proud of Kyle Van Noy in the season that he's had. Mm-hmm. Great guy, great individual. Looking forward to going against him in a couple of days. So you dismiss the concept that this is a revenge game for the defending Super Bowl champion New England Patriots, Kyle, <laughs> yeah. Kyle Van Noy. Yeah. You you lost a game in this in this in this season and you won won the Super Bowl. There's no revenge anything. <laughs> <laughs> I denounce it all. It's all denounced. It's, it's denounced. Now. You do now. Now. <laughs> You reject that concept, that mental gameplay. You call Kyle Van Noy after this, and you tell him that's a load of bull. That's a load of bull, <laughs> and this is a family show, so I'm not going to finish it. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I have spoken to uh, a bunch of offensive linemen who have faced a Belichick defensive uh, coordinated or influenced team and and how they do certainly uh, reserve different things that you haven't seen that you might spend three you know uh, you may, may spend several practices working on three different uh, schemes that you think's coming at you and then they use a fourth they uncork a fourth or a fifth that they might have used only once before I'm sure Vrabel knows all about that is that sort of a cat and mouse scenario being discussed with you right now? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I'm actually. I'm going into the building in just a couple of minutes, and we'll have a, a team meeting and sit down, and we'll go over everything. But I played the Patriots. This is my fourth time playing them. I think third or fourth time, and that they like they have great football players on their defense. I think I heard. I don't want to say idiot because I don't want to insult somebody, mm-hmm. but I heard some guy commentating a football game with the Patriots, and he said basically a bunch of no name guys, which oh, once again is a load of bull. You fill in the rest. Those guys are talented, they're well-known, and they know what they're doing. But their defense, what they do a really good job of is, and this is not a slight or anything, but it's kind of a spin the dial. Like, what are we going to run this week? And they kind of have this big, giant, circular device, and they spin it, and there's that clicking. Right. And it gets to, okay, we're running bear this week. Oh, we're running 3-4 this week. Oh, we're running 4-3 this week. You know? 
And so it's kind of like you, have, you kind of have to prepare for everything going into this and the way they play those blocks based on the week, you know, and then you can say, well, they've done this against outside zone teams or this against gap scheme teams. And Arthur does a good job of mixing up both. Um, you know, we have, we, we kind of run every kind of offense in our offense. And I think Arthur's done a good job of calling those to keep other teams balanced. You get them running sideways and you hit one downhill and then the play action opens up the rest of it. So before I let you go, Taylor, as you go walk into the building to get ready for the wild card playoff game against New England on Saturday night uh, for the whole country to be sitting there and watching, um, maybe, you know, uh, running backs get their offensive linemen a gift. Maybe uh, Derrick Henry for winning the rushing title behind you and your, your, your mates. Maybe he gets your mates something else and he gets you the engine for bussing with the boys. What do you think about that idea? <laughs> I tell you, uh, I have already, I've already bought it. I've already bought the it's, engine. What is it? And so the engine is now, as we're talking right now, Rich, I want you to listen very closely. Okay. As these words are coming out of my mouth, yes. there's an engine being placed into the bus. Real time. Now, Will and I have already talked long and hard about this. Okay. As soon as that bus is running, I'm not going to drive it to L.A. because I'm not wasting those kind of miles on a new engine. Okay. I'm going to get that baby shit. And guess where I'm coming? I'm coming over to see you. The Rich Eisen Show. Down, you, okay. me, and all the Chris's you have, and we're going to sit and talk. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so right now, the, what, what's the engine? Do, can you tell me the exact engine that's going yeah, in the bus? It's a, it's a diesel. It's a diesel Cummins engine, actually. Okay. And please don't make me go any further than that. No or problem. That's no, okay. Like an idiot. No, it's okay. It's and okay. And that is, it's beautiful. Some it's, almost... it's going to run great. Pops right in. Okay. A guy named Joe Agent's putting it in for me. Right and, now. Um, right okay. as we speak at this moment. So what is Derrick Henry getting everybody? Or has he gotten everybody? Well, I, I tell you what, he, I, I hope he gets me a grill because I think that would be hilarious to play football with a grill in. I've never had a grill before. Oh, I and, thought you uh, meant for the bus. I thought that's what you meant, the grill, a grill for the bus. No, I meant like a grill. Like an, I want to I ice trade a gang, as they say. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I don't know what I just said. I hope I wasn't an insult to me, but I'm trying to ice trade a gang. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm trying to get it down, Rich. Come okay, on, baby. I got it. So he hasn't bought you anything is what you're saying. Not yet. Well, I mean, it happened a day and a half ago. So I'm okay. You know, Derek's a confident, confident guy. But I, we, I think we all went in that game not knowing if that was really a possibility. Because Chuck right. had about 75, 80 yards more than Derek going into this game. Man. And then um, Todd, our tight end. I'll tell you what. Towards the end of the game, he's like, when he, when he gets going, man, you know, the three yards turn into six, and then the six turns into 60, and it's uh, amazing. I mean, it's just when he gets going, the business decisions get much, much more or easier, I guess, for defenders. It's amazing. It really is, man. It, it really is. He, he just gets churning, man. And the thing is, he gets mad. If he gets four-yard gain, he's pissed. Because to him, to him, every single situation, there's an opportunity for a touchdown there. And so you see that, and you're like, I want to get this guy that touchdown. Because, see, I don't want to deal with a, Der- a mad Derrick. You, no one wants to deal with a mad Derrick. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, in the first half of that game, he had like 66 yards rushing in the first half, which is good. You know what I'm saying? You double that, right? That's one, what, 132? I'm not great at math. Let's <laughs> pretend I put it in. Yes, that's I mean, true. That's, that's, a, that's a good day. That's a good day at the office. And he's pissed. And he came out, and he just ran twice as hard, man. That guy is He's an absolute workhorse. He's a great person. He deserves every single accomplishment he gets. Yeah, 211 yards rushing and the big win for for uh, the Titans. And again, the difference between 66 and 211 yards is the difference between a podcast and a bus with an engine and with without. without. So I'm, I'm glad you're getting this thing Here we holy, go again. Here rectified. We go again. I'm getting. I'm, I know it's my way of saying I'm glad that you're getting this rectified and that I will be the first uh, planned, scheduled, if you will, to appear guest. Oh. I'm bussing with the boys in a bus with an engine in it, and I would be honored to be that person. I'd actually be, I'd be wow. insulted if it was somebody else, Taylor. I'll be honest. Well, I mean, the way things have been going out, I just might go 50-50 at this point. Sounds good. You're Either the, you, yes. or I'm going to find out if you had an arch nemesis in college, some guy in the <laughs> fraternity you were in, you hated, and I'm going to have him on. Whoever that or person is, they're not, nearly, about you. they're not nearly as good as a guest as me. I'll tell you that, whoever that person might actually be. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Only time will tell. Good luck in New England, brother. I'll be I'll be watching. I'll be watching. We'll chat soon. Happy New Year to you I'll and yours. It. I'll talk to you soon. Happy New Year to you and yours. That's Taylor Lewan, offensive line with Tennessee Titans, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Never disappointing as the guest. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.